So I'm my dad's gonna do fix the holes and do it dry. Drywall? He did the paint on his garage and he will fix everything. When we was at a home at Sammy's house, Daddy, there was two ones and I played and then he did the other one and it was fixed. And the other one, when I did my shoes over that wall, where the hole was where Dad was fixing it, and these holes at his garage, he's going to fix and that one and that one and that one. <laughs> but I don't want to show you the other one. They can't see that one, Pumpkin, because the video is not there. We'll show them later, okay? Okay. So I will go. There was a pipe work like a pipe over that way, and Dad fixed it with a piece of wood, and now he's gonna fix these two ones today. All right. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about fixing holes in drywall. You can see I had two holes here, and apparently a lot of other holes, as my daughter pointed out for us. Um, but I don't really see those other ones. Anyway, um, so like I said, quick, easy fix, a drywall patch. But here's the thing. This is the target audience for this video is actually, I have two daughters, and I know I'm not always going to be around to uh, fix these types of holes for them. So I'm going to do a very quick video. And Brielle's going to go on the Matterhorn at Disneyland. And, yeah. and I'm going to, um, Daddy's going to, um, do a thing is where it's I told or not yet to for the Matterhorn. Oh, I'm going to build a, um, a growth chart. And I'm going to actually put the heights for the Disneyland rides on the growth chart so she can see if she's tall enough for the bad one because she's not quite tall enough yet. And every day she asks if she is tall enough. So I'm going to build a growth chart that will have the height of the Matterhorn and then we can resolve the test every day on whether or not she's tall enough. Even if I eat all of the pear and I don't think I tall enough, Daddy will get that and see if I told yet. It's, but I have to do my legs right by it like this. And then... And see if you're tall enough? Yeah, but not yet. So, I know it. And I have to eat just water, vegetables, and like a food too. Like that. Lots of vegetables. She has to eat lots of vegetables so that she grows tall enough for the matter. Okay, so like I was saying, I unfortunately, um, the reality is I may not always be around to fix things like this for my daughters when they're older. And so I'm going to make a quick video. It's going to go on YouTube and it will be forever there, I guess. As long as YouTube's around, the video will be there for them. So in 15, 20 years, um, they can pull up this video and they can fix their own drywall patch. They'll be able to handle this type of thing by themselves. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a whole series of these types of videos. So that's my target audience. That's what I'm talking to. Um, I'm not going to use professional jargon. I'm not going to do anything too technical. I'm going to cheat this a, a few ways. I'm going to do some things that are a little bit easier. I think in the end, though, it's going to come out just as good as uh, if we hire someone to do it. So with that being said, let's get started. The first thing is... Hello. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, you didn't know it was 
a music video. Huh? Um, one of the things I see a lot of people do is they'll actually come through and make their marks first on the wall. They will. So about seven inches is what we need for clearance to get around this. So they'll actually come over here, they'll put it, draw down seven, draw over seven, back up seven, back over. They'll draw a perfect seven inch by seven inch square to fix this hole. Once they have their line, their pencil mark there, they'll take a drywall saw or a keyhole saw. They'll come back through and they will follow their pencil mark. They will cut that out. So they'll already make their cut. They'll take their scrap sheet of drywall. This actually was quite long, okay. This was actually two foot by two foot scrap piece of drywall and you can get at your local hardware store. They're about $5. Much easier to just buy one of these than bring home an eight foot by four foot sheet of drywall, which is typically what they sell them in. So get the scrap piece for about $5. And then we're going to use this. You can always just hang on to it. You can see I've used this several times just to fix little um, holes here and there. So they got their hole cut out seven inch by seven inch. Now they have to come back through and they have to duplicate a perfect seven inch by seven inch hole on their scrap wood. Not distracting at all, is it? Now that is not very easy. And to me, I think it makes it more difficult than it needs to be. So. I can do this and go, you know what? This piece right here is perfect. I'm not gonna try and do any measurements. I know it's gonna work. All I have to do is take my box cutter and I'm gonna score a line straight across here, all right? This is how you cut drywall. You're basically just gonna score the paper on the back side. So let's do that first. Alright, that's there. I can actually hit this and it'll break over just like that. You can see there's the paper on this side, but I've got my mark there. So all I have to do is follow the mark on this side. Okay, so I have my square, all right, perfect square. All I have to do now, switch over just a little bit, is put this square up against here, and it doesn't matter if I'm a little bit angled, I wanna to try to be as perfect as I can, so I'll get it straight up and down. But I've got that whole cut, oh, I'm sorry, I've got the square cut. Take my pencil, and now I'm gonna trace this pre-cut square. Want to do this one? So right, right here, right down there. Perfect. You got it. That's okay. Daddy will paint that. So, here's our square. We've got our pencil mark already up there. Now, it's going to be really easy. I'm going to take my drywall cutter again. I'm going to cut out this square. And I already know it's going to be perfect to this. So, this should fit perfectly, right? All right, so let's do that. Now, most drywall saws have a pointed edge that you can actually just shove right through the drywall to start your square. Now, if that's too difficult, just start on the hole and cut over to the pencil line. Insulation. Back up, I don't need to breathe this stuff. 
okay? Can you go stand over there, stand outside the garage? The only thing I have to really, uh, the only thing I have to really think about when I'm cutting this out is to keep my cut nice and straight because that half inch drywall that I'm replacing is a nice straight edge. So I want to make sure that it matches. If I angle this a little bit, it's going to make it difficult to slide my uh, my patch in there. You want to talk to him? Right. You can talk to him while I cut this out. Bring my dad. They can't see you. Come stand over here. There's a two by four every 16 inches in this wall, and that's what obviously helps hold the wall up, and that's what we attach the drywall to. So, right here, there's actually a stud, which is good. That's going to help us whenever we try to uh, patch our, our drywall, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to cut out. So, here's how we get around that same thing, we're going to take the box cutter and we're going to score it again, like we did earlier. score the entire pencil line and sometimes that'll help you when you cut it with the drywall. Hey, I need to know that. Yeah, that's what you're going to do to help you cut it. See how I follow my pencil line with this? And that's going to give me a little bit easier cut with my drywall. With my uh, drywall cutter. two by four here and I'm gonna I cut this down because I scored that it just comes out easy Because 
We're going to be able to secure the patch to it on this side, but we don't have anything on this side. You'll see the pros will use a little piece of one by like this, and they'll just drop that in there, secure it, and then attach their drywall to it. Well, that's great for them, but that makes it a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. We're going to go a little bit on the crazy side here, and this is a 2 by 4 It's plenty big enough, but it's still going to fit in here perfectly. So I can actually slide this thing over almost an inch and give me plenty of clearance to sink a screw in there to secure it to this side. I'm going to take my drill and a drywall screw. I'm going to slide this thing over quite a bit, leaving enough space to support my drywall later on. And I'm just going to sink a screw. Now, you have to hold pretty tight, otherwise the screw wants to push the 2x4 away from us. So we're going to hold on to this pretty tight so that the screw will catch and sink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just past flush, okay? So, yep. When I screw this screw in, I want it to go below the surface, but I don't want to punch through the paper. So, you'll get the idea. It's not a big deal if you punch all the way through, but we want to just make sure that this screw is not sticking out. That's the main goal. Okay, so now I've got that 2x4 nice and secure on this side. I got this stud on that side. So, I've got good backing. I put my piece back in. And now I know where that stud is. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the patch. You can see I just did two screws on it. Um, when I put those two screws in, it was really solid. It was holding nicely, so I'm going to leave it alone. If, uh, if it's not holding well, put a couple more screws in, but less is more with screws and drywall. So I'm, I'm really comfortable with just those two, and I'm going to leave it at that. This is self-adhesive tape. What this does is this keeps us from having to buy the compound and mix up our own drywall lead. All right, we're going to skip that step. We're just going to use tape that already sticks. It's not the best, but it works just fine. So I'm going to cut off about probably 10, 10 inch piece there. Okay, so I've got tape over all my seams. The next step is going to be this uh, pre-mix, basically, joint compound. Uh, this again is just keeping us from having to buy um, all the compound mix and, and doing it ourselves. We're just going to use this. It's all pre-done. Just peel the top off and it's ready to go. So you're basically just going to um, they call it floating, is where you'll take this stuff and just float it along. Just kind of try to feather it out on the edge. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to apply it until I've, until I've got, until the paper, or I'm sorry, until the tape is hidden. And I'll run it all the way across. A lot easier with bigger trowels, but I'm just trying to show you how to do this without having all the other technical stuff. So you get the basic idea of just kind of starting on one side and just kind of lightly floating it all the way to the other side until I'm kind of flush on this. And I'm, I'm going, I guess, a medium thickness. I, I, don't need to, I don't need to cover everything, but I don't want to keep coming back over this two or three more times. I'm probably going to do this one more time. I'm going to just go ahead and put my first coat on, let that dry, come back and do float one more coat, and then be done with it. So I'm going a little bit thicker than probably a professional wood on the first on the first run. Just kind of making sure that my tape is covered up.
This one I can go real light. Okay, I've zoomed in pretty close for this and you probably still won't be able to see it too well, but take a look down here. This is a textured wall. You can see all these little dimples here. This is made when um, they use like a hopper to come in and they just kind of splatter uh, joint compound or drywall mud all over the wall and then somebody comes through and knocks it down, all right? So obviously when we've done our patch, we have a nice flat, flush, relatively flush patch. And we're gonna have to try to match this texture. Now, we're not gonna be able to get it right on, but I think we can get it pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of put little blobs of joint compound throughout, all right? Not going too crazy, trying to stay off of uniform. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So now that you see I've gone through, made all the splashes, and this is what I'm gonna do here, just, just pulling it down, that's it. Now, if you end up doing this and you're way off, the good thing is you can actually just go right through and you can pretty much pull everything you just laid right off the wall. And you can come back and redo it. Make my own if you didn't make it. Let's see if we can make one right there. Right. Wipe this down and then just pull. Probably a little hard to see in the video, but it's putting a texture on there. And you can even kind of get a little bit more just by removing a little bit and pulling. So this is a, uh, a sanding block you can get at the Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, your big box stores. One side is a kind of a coarse, the other side is a fine. So because I was pretty light with the coat, I only need the fine side. I don't really have a lot of big chunks to knock down or anything, so I'm just going to kind of smooth it out. Where was the hole at? Nope, right here. See, you can't even tell where the hole was. So that's a win, right? If you knew what you were looking for, you'd be able to see that it's uh, the texture is a little bit gone here, a little bit flat, doesn't quite match. But the important thing is we don't see any seams. And the seams are a dead giveaway that we patched a hole. And so since we don't see seams, we got a decent texture job on there. No one's ever going to be able to tell that there was once a hockey puck that got shot through the wall. Who shot the hockey puck through the wall? Uh, Daddy? Uh -huh. Daddy. Yep. Uh -huh. It happens. Say bye. Tell everybody bye. Bye. bye, bye. Um, thanks for watching. Show him the hidden Mickey right here. Look, you see one? Find a hidden Mickey. Hidden Mickey. I don't see it. Mm, where'd it go? I made you one. Mm, where was it? Oh, there it is. See it? Oh, yeah. Hidden Mickey. Right? Hidden Mickey. Yeah. Hey, tell them, tell them thanks for watching and tell them bye. Thanks for watching and bye.